Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Chris Leader of Calliope Games. And we're going to talk about something very special happening in November. Am I correct? Yes. So we are launching on November 10th the Calliope Game Night Extravaganza on Kickstarter, which is a three game collection of card games that are all completely unique, but are all super fun. And it's a chance for people to get three really good games for one really low price. Oh, wow. What, what was the uh, what was the reason behind this idea? So we had we had these games in development for a while. We had uh, the three games, Mass Transit, Enchanted Plumes and Allegory, all kind of going in development concurrently. And we started to realize, you know, these are three really different takes on card games. There's bidding, there's a co-op game, uh, there's set collection. They're all doing some different things. And we thought, you know, this is something where Calliope Games is all about uh, games that can play fast. You know, you can get the whole family around the table to play or a group of friends when in the world you can get a group of friends together. But um, we started to realize that these games, while they don't thematically tie together, they are a wonderful collection of small box games. And what we found was we would bring these games and play them with people as a trio. And it kind of became natural to us that these games kind of work together. Now, later on down the road, years from now, they may not be you know lumped together as one collection, but while we were testing it and while people were playing it, they kind of started thinking of these things together. So these are three great games that can go into anyone's game library and they'll all do a little bit something different for the person. Um, and that's why we decided to do this all together as one Kickstarter. Instead of instead of doing a Kickstarter for one $15 game and another $15 game and a $25 game, we said, well, if we throw them all together and people can get three games for 40 bucks, that's a pretty good deal. And it gives you an entire night's worth of entertainment. And that's why we went with the Calliope game night extravaganza, because if you <laughs> want to try something brand new and different, you'll have these three games to do that with. Oh, what, what is the uh, date of release for, for this? So the, the launch is November 10th. Um, and we're looking at, <laughs> it's tough because we're still working with the factory to kind of get an idea of how long it's going to take for the production and everything. But the art for these games is completely done. We are not doing this as a game that is <clears throat> that needs a lot of changes and a lot of different things. There's no stretch goals in this campaign. These, these games are pretty much, we've, we've made the art for it. These are uh, tested like crazy. They're really, really fun. We're just ready to go. So that should hopefully make these things come pretty quickly. So we're eyeballing probably middle of next year for these to come out, just you know, based on how long it takes the files to get to the factory and for the factory to do it. And we've had, with our last um, campaign, which was Station Master, there were definitely some delays because of the factories, because of the fulfillment, you know, the, the boat getting here and, and the containers and things like that. So we just like to be a little bit realistic with how the world is. So we're probably looking at middle of next year for it to be the games coming out. Oh, excellent, excellent. This is almost like a like a little early, if it's own plans, right? This could be a nice Christmas gift in a way, at exactly. least. Exactly, yeah, yeah. We, and that's what we're hoping for too. We, we want people to be able to take advantage of these, even if going into next year, people are still quarantining and people are still in the bubble. We'd like to be able to get these games to people so that they can play them uh, while they're still in the midst of all of that. Mm, excellent. So <clears throat> speaking of Station Master, let's, we're going to talk about one of the games is uh, Mass Transit. Uh, yeah. I, know, I know with Station Master it was about trains and, and some math solving uh, fun stuff. But uh, yeah, what so is Mass Transit, so I, I got to say this right up front. I love trains. I'm a big train game nut. Some people love them, some people don't. I personally love train games. So this game is actually designed by myself and one of my best friends in the world, Kevin Rogers. Um, it's a cooperative game where the way it started was I, I've enjoyed playing the mind. I've enjoyed playing the game. Um, some people argue, oh, it's not really a game. It's an exercise, it's an activity, whatever. I enjoy the social aspect of those games, staring in people's eyes, not knowing what they're going to play, seeing if you can build on what they do. The only problem with those games is there's no theme for me to get 
my family into it too much. It's more of something I do with my gaming friends. Mm. So I thought, how do I accomplish something along those lines where you're cooperating to do something, limited communication, but there's a little bit of a theme. And that's where Mass Transit was born. So the idea is the players all have four cards in their hand. Everyone starts in the big city, which is a hexagonal uh, board in the middle of the, of the table. And there are six routes that can go out from it. And each of the routes has three different lines. There's a bus line, a ferry line, and a train line. The cards you play can be used to extend those lines. Of the four cards in your hand, you have to play at least two of them. But you can play all of them if you want. But you can't tell anybody what you have or what you're going to play. So you may play a card. For instance, let me, let me take this out here and show you. So the different routes look like this. So here's here's the the road and the and the waterway and the, and the tracks. Some of them will have stops, bus stops or, or ferry stops or train stops. As you play these, you can use them to in a, to extend a route. So you can actually make the lines go out. The other thing you could do because you'll have six meeples that are your commuters that are trying to get out from the city to their homes out in the suburbs. This is what the suburb card looks like. So you need to get them all the way out there. So you can play cards to extend routes or you can discard a card to move a commuter along a stop from one station to the next. So if I have a commuter sitting on this train station, I can discard a different train card to move them from one train stop to the next. So when I play my cards, I'm choosing to do one or the other, either extend routes or move commuters along the lines. And the hope is that as a team, you can get all six people to the suburbs at the very end of the lines, and then you win the game. However, there are tricky cards that can come up. There are traffic cards that will stop a vehicle halfway through a, a travel. So it stops here and you have to play another one to get it going. There's also cards that will end routes. So if you're taking a train and you stop here, it means you're going to now have to walk using one of these walk cards to the next card, which might have a station on it so you can continue on. So the real fun of this game is you don't know what cards you're going to get. You don't know what order they're in. There's only 52 cards in the deck. And when those 52 cards run out, you have to finish the game based on what you have. And at any point, if someone can't legally play two of the cards from their hand, everybody loses. The entire team of urban planners has failed to get the people home. <laughs> so it's it's really fun. You don't know what other people are going to do. And you might be thinking, this is so easy. I can, I can do this. This is easy. But as you play, suddenly people start putting cards on because they're trapped. They have to play a certain card. And now it ruins your whole plan. You're like, oh, no, now they have to stop an extra time. I can't do what I meant to do. But you can't blame anybody because that's what they have to work with. So with no communication whatsoever, I mean, you can talk a little bit as you're playing, but you can't say, I've got a lot of bus cards here, or I'm going to play this, or I'm going to just, can't talk anything like that. You've got to just kind of work together, kind of feel out what's going to be coming up. And then the great thing about mass transit is it tends to come down to the last turn, whether you win or lose. So you're out of cards, people, it's like, oh my gosh, I, I've only got one card left in my hand. If it gets back to me, we can't win because I can't play two cards. So you guys have to win. So it's it's a lot of fun. There's a little bit of a pressure that builds throughout the game. And it's a, it's a fun little co-op game, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, and the other thing that's nice about it, so it's the very first cooperative game that Calliope has ever made. And it's the first game that anyone can play solo that Calliope Games has made. So this is our first solitaire game. And it's our first uh, cooperative game. So you can play this game all the way up to six players. But if you want to set this thing up and play, you know, solo, you can do that. And it only takes about 15, 20 minutes to play, no matter how many players you have. So it's a very quick little game. You can take it anywhere you go. It gives you a really fun little co-op experience. That's awesome. I, I, I have... Lots of kids in my life, so I, I and they all love trains and cars and all that. It's such a, it's such a great uh, like that team just just doesn't die. It, that will always go on. Kids will always yeah. love vehicles. Uh, yeah. so and this is this is one where if you if you have it sitting on the shelf, um, we've had testers who said that they played it with their family, you know, to try it out. They left it on the shelf and they came down the next morning and their kids had taken it back out and were playing it by themselves because they were having so much fun with it. And I. 
for me, that's what I really, really love because, you know, that's what happened with Roll For It was we found that once kids started playing it, they wanted to play and play and play. So now it's looking like Mass Transit has the same kind of thing. So I'm very excited about that. Kids like it, but it's also something where we have, I've seen grown adults, they can't win, they get beaten and they're like, nope, we're playing again. We've got to start it over. And then they play time after time and they're losing and they're like driving each other nuts, but they want to keep going because they want to win the game. Oh, that's excellent. And I love the fact that it could be a solo or, or, or more because, you know, with COVID, the, the, uh, I have some board games that I love to play, but there's, you need like four people or more, five people yeah. or more. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's just not going to be yeah. played anytime soon. So that's this, awesome. The versatility. Yeah. You play from one all the way up to six. So if you have a big family and you're all stuck in a house together, you can all play together. And if you're by yourself and there's nobody else around, then you can play it alone. So I like that. It's working really well that way. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, Enchanted Plumes. Enchanted Plumes. <laughs> so, another little box game. And in this one, you are assembling the plumes of peacocks um, and trying to score the most points by impressing the peahen. Here's the, here's the peahen. She comes around. She's in the last eight cards at the bottom of the deck. This is a pure card game. So this card is the peahen. She's shuffled in with the bottom eight cards of the deck. And the rest of the cards are all peacock feathers of all different colors, um, different values. And the way the game works is um, you have to build, imagine a peacock plume that starts big and then it tapers down to, to very small at the bottom. When you play the game, you'll have a handful of cards. You have to play either one or two cards to start or continue a plume. You start by creating the top row. But the trick here with the top row is all of the values in the top row, the biggest one, will be counted as negative values when you go to score. So you want to make sure you have some ones or maybe some zeros that you can play in that top row. And then once you decide to go down to the second row, you can only use cards of the same colors that were in the row above. So if you had red, blue, and yellow in the top row, those are the only colors you can choose from to add to the second row. But starting with the second row and moving downwards, all of the cards now count as a positive score. So only the top row counts against you. Everything below is now positive, so you want higher value numbers, but you also have to only have the, co the colors that were in the top row. So you can either have one giant peacock with a huge rainbow, or you can make a bunch of little ones, because what'll happen is, as you taper down to the bottom, the very last card that you play when it goes down to one card, you'll play the final card face down. So you'll actually put it down, and then no one knows. It still has to obey the rules. So the color of it still has to match what's above it, but you don't know what the value of that last card is until the end of the game when all of those are revealed. And then if you completed a peacock all the way down to the, to the final card, you get one bonus point for every card that made up that entire peacock plume. So the other part of it is, so the first part is the playing of cards. You play one or two cards to, to build up your plumes and then it's replenishment. And this is where Brendan Hansen is the gentleman who designed this game. And I thought it was, this is really smart you have your cards in the middle there's what we call the train which is a, a lineup of cards face up next to the deck when you go to replenish your hand you can either take two blind drawn cards off the top of the deck or you can swap out two cards from your hand with two from the train but when you do that and you swap you might be giving somebody else exactly the card that they need when you swap in something that you don't want um so there's, there's a really fun kind of a, I don't want to give them, I see he's building with red, I want to get rid of this red, but I don't want to give him a high-valued red card. So there's a lot of that um, really fun kind of making decisions and things like that. So this one just is a set collection game because you're building, following a few simple rules with following the colors and then the top row being negative, everything else being positive, and then some bonus points. Um, but it's, it's such a, a smooth playing game. And again, this one plays from two players all the way up to six players. And the only thing you do in the low uh, player count games is you'll remove a certain number of high valued cards, all the nines, all the eights, all the sevens, depending on player count. That way it keeps the number of cards for the colors kind of where they should be with the player count. But 
Um, really fun, quick playing game. And it looks gorgeous on the table when you have these beautiful feathers, all drawn by Echo Chernick, who's a wonderful artist who did the work for this. Yeah, how, how wonderful. It seems, it seems simple, yet complicated. Uh, a lot of strategy involved that you have to it's, figure it, out. The, the gameplay itself is, is simple, but the strategies buried in there are complex. So as you're playing, you might start to see that people have a lot of peacocks that are blue, you know, a lot of blue feathers out there. And there's only one of each color and number in the deck. So if you start seeing a lot of one color and you had started that blue, you may have to say, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to do this because they're taking all the blue cards. So there's also kind of, I don't want to say card counting because there's a lot of hidden information when you put those cards face down. But you do have to kind of go, okay, I'm seeing a whole lot of purple. I probably don't want to touch purple because they're already kind of cornering the market on those feathers. So maybe I want to stick with yellow or white or something like that. So um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of decisions to be made when you play the game. Wow, wow. That, that, that is very different from Mass Transit. And now another game that's also very different from both of them, Allegory, um, which yeah. the art is, oh man, that cover art is fantastic. Um, yeah. uh, uh, can you just tell me, what, what is this game about? So Allegory is a game uh, designed by Zach Wiseman. Um, it's a game where players take on the role of mythic storytellers, your authors, you are writing tales, um, allegories. And so what you're doing is it's, it's a bidding game where you bid using these lore chips. There's a imagination or an inspiration pool in the middle of the table. And you are bidding using these lore chips to claim these theme cards from the inspiration pool that you will add into three different tales that you're writing. There's a tale of power. There's a tale of uh, um, nature and there's a tale of spirit. So basically that means there's three columns that you're adding into. There's green, there's blue, and there's yellow. And as you're taking the themes and adding them into your tails, you're trying to balance the values of those tails because only the tail at the end of the game that has the lowest total value will be the one that you score. So unlike most games where you kind of are just grabbing as many points as you possibly can, in this one, you'd be careful because you could run away with one color, but if the other one, you only have one point, that's the one that's gonna score. So I'll just show the, uh, the actual themes themselves um, are kind of archetypes, they're dichotomies. So it might be happy and sad, or it might be civilized versus wild. So every one of these themes is kind of a, a two-sided thing as you're telling it. So it might be uh, hardworking versus lazy. So, uh, and they all have these numerical values on them. And so what you'll do is you'll, you'll bid using these lore chips, which I have um, mock-up ones from the Game Crafter here, but these are nice big lore chips. These things are compared to a normal poker card. These are poker chip sized. And the final ones, these are thin. The final ones will actually be a little thicker. These will feel like real poker chips, even though they're punch board, they'll be very weighty. So what you'll do is on your turn, you're bidding and it's a push bid. So if I bid one, you might bid two. The next player bids three, comes back to me. Maybe I up it to five. When it goes to the next player, maybe they say that's too rich for my blood. They decide to fold or rest. They put their rest marker out, which is, you know, because your, your authors, your rest marker you put out looks like a, uh, a quill pen that you're putting down. Like I'm resting, I'm not writing right now. But then what you get to do is the lineup of cards that's in the middle will have lore chips on them from previous. And I'll explain how that happened in just a second. Of all the cards that are out, when you rest, you get to take a card from the middle that has the most lore chips on it. And then you'll go around like that with people resting and taking cards and bidding until someone is finally the winner of the bid. They get to take whichever card in the lineup they want. But then what they do is they take all of the lore chips that they bid to win that round and they, they distribute them amongst the cards in the middle any way they want. And what you might want to do, remember, earlier I said, when you fold, you get to take the card that has the most chips on it. So let's say in the middle, there's a card that's a negative two value. 
I might choose as the winner to dump all of my chips on that card in the middle that's a negative two, because in the next round, when someone folds, if they're going to take a card, they have to take a negative value card. Now, they might get some chips out of it, but I'm also hurting their score. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of thought that goes into how do I want to distribute these chips? Do I want to load them all onto one low value? Do I want to spread them across a couple of other ones? Because I know I want this one over here and I'm just going to put some chips on other things. So there's where in this game, unlike most poker and bidding kind of things, if you win, you get all the money, you can take all the chips, right? In this one, you don't keep the chips, you spread them out and that entices people for later. And so you get to make some strategic decisions about how that stuff works. So as you're collecting these theme cards, they're going into three different piles. Like I mentioned, there's, there's three different mm -hmm. tails. So these are the three tails. There's the tail of power, there's the tail of nature, and there's the tail of spirit, as indicated by the color of the number at the top. And all of your cards will go into those columns. And once someone has 10 cards in their tableau, that signals the last round. And that's when you count up your scores and you see which of your three tails has the lowest total value. You have to have at least one card in each tail or else you're ineligible to score at all. So you'll look and see which is your lowest. You'll get the points from that. Um, there's also each of the themes has its own icon up in the corner. Uh, for every set of three icons across your whole tableau, you get a bonus two points. And then finally, at the beginning of the game, everyone was dealt a hidden moral card. This is a theme that's the moral that they're trying to infuse into all three of their tails. So for each of your tails that actually has this theme, you get a bonus point because it's an allegory, right? You're trying to come up with those hidden morals in there. So um, it's Ray Weirs is our, our company president and he is um, a very big fan of bidding games and take that. He really loves Station Master because it's all that secret bidding on getting things. Um, and this game just tickles him because he loves the thought process that goes into where do I want to, what do I want to take? Where do I want to put my coins out? You know, how am I going to, how am I going to trick others into taking the cards that, that, you know, I don't want and how do I leave the one that I do? So he has a, a lot of fun with that. And, and when I play with him, I think my favorite thing to do is, is to do things he doesn't expect because then it makes them all red in the face and he's going, what, you're, 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 you're going to do that. And I was like, no, no, I know you wanted me to take that card, but no, I'm going to go and do this one over here instead. So, um, yeah, allegory is, uh, it's, there's a lot, it's like enchanted plumes in that there's a, uh, a very deep amount of thinking that goes into it. You can play without all that deep thinking and just have fun. But when you're playing with a table full of people who really know how to read each other, it's so much fun. It, and there's, it just unlocks this whole level of depth that is uh, just a blast. Wow. Three very different games, which is great because, um, you know, I mean, sure, people may want a lot of one thing, but after a while, especially if you have different people in, in your life that are like different things, uh, that could just be dry really fast. Uh, yeah. or, um, but this is awesome. Um, Wow! Yeah, yeah, this is this is fantastic. I'm I'm excited about this. I can't wait to uh, see your Kickstarter go up. Um, so for anyone um, that wants to know more, I know you mentioned the Kickstarters will be live. This will be live on November 10th. November 10th, and and our preview page is there. If you go to Kickstarter and search for the Calliope Game Night Extravaganza, you can set yourself up to be alerted when we go live. Um, so yeah, it launches on the 10th, and we're hoping for a big turnout of people coming and checking it out. Excellent. And is there any other place if anyone wants more information? Yeah, uh, you follow us on, on Twitter, um, which is at Calliope Games, and Facebook, uh, we're Calliope Games there as well. Those are the best places. Our, uh, our social media has been ramping up with different images. We're going to have uh, all kinds of fun videos, playthroughs. The other thing is um, on our Kickstarter page, we will have all three games available on Tabletop Simulator. So they're fully playable with all the art and the uh, the links will be there to go grab those off of Steam. 
um, and then played on tabletop simulators. So there are lots of fun to play that way. And we want to give people the opportunity to do that since uh, a lot of us have gotten very used to playing with others through tabletop simulator during COVID. Definitely. Well, Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about this. This is very exciting. And uh, to our viewers out there, um, I'll put the, the links in the description below. And um, everyone, have a very safe and careful day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.